As this GameStop story has developed, it's become exactly the sort of encouragement this country has sorely needed. The fighting trolley spirit of ordinary Americans challenging the crooked elite, the unlikely Twitter alliances between those with actual unironic hammers and sickles in their bios, and blue check journalists declared Nazis, and just the overall fun of finally refusing to do what we're told for once in a damn year. The story has everything we needed to just say no to the black pills, at least for a little while longer, and enjoy a moment of mischief that gives hope that at least some of our corrupt rulers may not be as powerful as they seem. You think this country is near totally split, there is no way we'll ever come together again, and then suddenly here's Ted Cruz and AOC in total agreement, if only for a moment, until AOC reverted back into petty, partisan, selfish form and said Ted Cruz tried to kill her. Yet Steve Scalise and Rand Paul are on line one for you, Alexandria. The only murder here is you killing the vibe, but even if the moment is imperfect, the lesson is still clear. An army of ordinary, motivated Americans can still accomplish a hell of a lot against seemingly unstoppable redcoats, no matter if it's 1776 or 2021. I won't go through the whole story. By now, you likely have some idea, and I'm not the greatest stock market and investment mind around anyway, so bear with my layman explanation, but the general idea is this. Hedge fund managers engage in what's called short selling, so borrowing stock and assuming liability with the expectation that those stock prices will decline. And when those prices do decline, the hedge fund turns a profit. So Wall Street investors are making bets that struggling companies will continue to struggle. And when they do, these investors cash in. That's the idea. So people over at the Wall Street Bets subreddit caught wind of some of these heavily shorted companies, GameStop, AMC Theaters, Blockbuster, etc. And they decided that if they bought up these stocks in large enough quantities, the stock prices would spike and these hedge fund managers would be liable for massive losses. And so they started the buy rush and with Elon Musk amplifying the effort, the GameStop surge was on less than three weeks ago. GameStop was trading at under 20 bucks a share. By Thursday morning, the price was more than 20 times that, almost $470 a share, thus making the hedge funds liable for massive losses, reportedly over $5 billion worth. Scratch that, actually, that news was a couple days old. Make it $19 billion. Losses so massive that some major hedge funds were speculated to be facing bankruptcy, though the hedge funds deny that worry. And strictly speaking, in just that arrangement, there's nothing illegal. That's just a war of an army of Wall Street speculators against an army of Reddit trolls with corona checks engaging in legal transactions in a free market. I know people have problems with both sides of this fight, but none of that is the actual scandal. The actual scandal is the intervention to make that fight and the market no longer free. Enter Robinhood, the free stock trading app on which many of these GameStop and other heavily shorted stocks were bought, announcing abruptly on Thursday morning, okay, that's enough. You can't buy any more GameStop stock or any of the others we want to protect. We're shutting it down due to quote unquote market volatility. The subtle irony being that halting the market forces in play will still produce volatility just in reverse. The major irony being a company named for the concept of saving the little guy from oppressive overlords is now plainly Team Overlord, or so it would seem. The company founded to democratize finance has decided, okay, that's enough democracy. Now we're iron fisting finance for all. Let the people trade. But hey, no, not like that. What are you doing? Hey, stop. Put down that phone. And even if Robin Hood didn't intend to be Team Overlord, the overlords sure are eager to join their team. Robin Hood was flooded with angry one-star app reviews until both Apple and Google intervened to rescue their ratings from all of these mean trolls. But who's the mean troll? People use the Robinhood app under the premise that they can move their money and make investments according to their own will and judgment. And Robinhood revoking that arrangement, revoking the central service of the app, is exactly why an app should get a poor review. It's deceptive to the consumer. It's manipulative to the market. It's not trolling. It's a breach of business ethics. And so it looks terrible for Robin Hood. It looks like they're protecting the big guy at the expense of the little guy with rules for some, but not for others. But everyone deserves their day in court. Everyone deserves to make their explanation. And there are several plausible reasons why Robin Hood might make this move, as many began speculating. Was it actually that sort of cronyism? Did some hedge fund boss call up Robin Hood and tell them to stop this peasant rebellion? Or 
Was it a government crackdown? Did the SEC call up Robin Hood and tell him to make that move? Is Robin Hood just trying to play big brother and protect its users from themselves by stopping unwise investments? Or maybe it's just a money thing. Maybe Robin Hood doesn't have the cash to cover this massive volume of trades. Robin Hood CEO Vlad Tenev appeared on CNBC on Thursday to make that explanation, but first and foremost, let's be very clear in as ambiguous and non-specific terms as possible. This is all very challenging. This is all very difficult, but also totally normal. What happened today was, as you pointed out, we had to make a very difficult decision. It's been uh, it's been a challenging day. So uh, it was a difficult decision. Um, and, uh, and, and that's what we had to do as part of normal operations. But it isn't normal, because if it was, then this wouldn't be challenging or difficult, and you wouldn't be doing this interview. Regardless, you don't get to make difficult decisions about other people's money. Those are their decisions to make. Unless, of course, the money problem in question isn't on the user end. It's on the company end. Now, it's still not a good look for a company, but from a PR standpoint, simple inability to meet demand is a way better explanation for what happened than corruption. And all the pieces are there. The Robinhood CEO himself says that Robinhood was the number one app in the country because of all the people scrambling to make the buy that Robinhood was scrambling to ban. Robinhood has been the number one app in the in the app store overall. So we have seen unprecedented uh, interest due to the fact that finance has been culturally relevant in a way that hasn't been before. And these stocks are going viral on social media. So the demand is there and it would appear that Robinhood didn't have the cash on hand to meet that demand because they tapped hundreds of millions of dollars in credit lines abruptly on Thursday. If you don't have the money to meet your obligations, that may not indicate that your company is particularly well run, but it's a hell of a lot better than your company being corrupt. So if this explanation is true, you'd expect the CEO to run with it, but he doesn't. He says plainly, liquidity is not the problem. It sounds to me though, that you're suggesting that there was a liquidity problem. No, no, there, there was no li liquidity problem. Okay, so if it's not cash, I guess we'll have to consider the other options, all of which are worse. The interviewer asks if it was government intervention, if the SEC gave Robin Hood an order. But explain then, why did you do this? What, did, did the SEC call you and tell you you had to do this? But the CEO never answers squarely. Apparently that question must have been too difficult and challenging for this difficult and challenging time. But in my opinion, I think we can count this theory out. Firstly, because if it was true, it would be the go-to easy answer for this CEO. Look, I didn't want to do it, but the government forced my hand. It would shift the blame away from him and on to Uncle Sam. I'm sure he would love to take the heat off of himself if he could do it truthfully. But second, I have a hard time believing that the government would target Robinhood uniquely. Yes, I know other stock brokerages did also suspend GameStop and other stock buys, but not everybody did. And the restrictions weren't uniform. Each brokerage's policies were a little bit different. If the government wanted to stomp out GameStop, the boot would be much larger instead of a special boot just for Robinhood. So it's not cash, says the CEO, and it's not government crackdown, the clues imply. Is it overreaching goodwill? Is Robin Hood trying to protect you, the consumer, from buying an inflated stock and losing money when the bubble bursts? The CEO isn't saying that, and even if he did, it would be a scandal. It's not the job of my banker to judge the wisdom of my spending. It's not the job of my brokerage to judge the wisdom of my investments. Such meddling would not only be morally wrong, but probably legally implicating too, exactly the sort of thing the CEO will say he didn't do in defending himself from such accusations in multiple lawsuits now facing the company. So I'd like to consider explanations besides corruption and cronyism, but this CEO isn't giving us any. And even if I buy his stated explanation that volatility puts the company in a difficult position operationally, his moves still don't make any sense and imply the worst may actually be true. If things are too volatile, why not suspend all transactions temporarily? If your company needs a minute to collect itself, why not just take a minute to collect yourself and step away entirely instead of banning only specific targeted transactions? And why just one type of transaction? The company only banned GameStop buys not GameStop sells, as the CEO explains. So to be clear, uh, customers could still sell 
uh, those securities if they had positions in them. Customers that held these positions um, were able to sell them. And we're doing what we can to allow uh, buying. Yeah, what are you complaining about? You're still allowed to sell your stock at a lower price that he manipulated. You're still allowed to cut your losses as long as he gets to force the losses. And by the way, restricting only one side of the transaction still allows for volatility. It's just volatility in another direction as people sell off to the benefit of these hedge fund managers. And if volatility is so damaging today, why is it just fine tomorrow? The CEO reopened limited GameStop buys on Friday, a move that could be explained by that new cash on hand. But again, if that was the reason they couldn't handle the transactions, why not just suspend or limit all transactions? There was one other statement from this CEO that was subtle, but totally baffling. It doesn't seem like this guy has a great ability to read a room in general, but this one was impossibly tone deaf. He says he's received a ton of criticism that the company hasn't been restrictive enough. Of course, Robinhood stands for, for everyday investors, and we've gotten a lot of criticism that, you know, maybe uh, there should be more restrictions. Who is making that criticism? Not one of the hundreds of thousands of negative app reviews was made because people think you aren't being restrictive enough. Nobody is begging you for a stronger iron fist, except for a very fringe, but potentially very influential few. Who would these people be? Well, they can only be one of two. Powerful elites in government or powerful elites in finance who don't take kindly to the little guy beating them at their own game. And the fact that this CEO would reference them, despite the peasantry storming his castle gate with pitchforks and torches, at least implies to me that some of these few are in his ear with particularly loud voices. Who those voices are, it'll be crucial to know. We won't get that answer on cable TV, but perhaps we'll get it elsewhere. Robin Hood may be dead. It's hard to see the company recovering from this scandal. So if you see this CEO guy as a hobo panhandling on your local street corner, toss a share at GameStonk in his change jar and tell him you have a question. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Minds that is at M. L. Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Come on.